Hi, in this video I want to give a demonstration on how to wrap a bioinformatics tool as a Docker image so that way you can share it with others and it's really good for data reproducibility um, and all that. So in this case we're going to wrap a metagenomic assembly tool called Megahit. And the reason why that's a good one as an example is it runs relatively quickly on, on reasonable read sets, but also it highlights um, the difference between like putting data inside your Docker image versus using the Docker image to analyze data that's mounted on your, your local disk instead. So <clears throat> in this case, uh, the first thing I want to do is actually get that data. Um, I've created a temporary directory here and in slash temp called assembly. You can see that here. Currently it has the Docker file, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, that's just this plain text file. But I want to gather um, the actual read data. And pardon me if my mouse uh, is a little bit slow. I had shoulder surgery a week ago and my right hand is useless. So um, everything is being done with my left hand. Um, I want to get the wget command and then pass the URL. Uh, this is from the Human Microbiome Project. Um, the uh, Data and Analysis and Coordination Center has read data from a wide variety of body sites uh, uh, from human anatomy. Um, and I'll put the link to the whole project where you can find these files in the description. But in this case, I just chose one that was of you know, small to medium size, so it would work well enough for this video. So the wget command will download it. It's a, a compressed tarball with bnzip. So it's relatively quick because it's not that large of a file. And like most read files, it has, or sorry, read sets, it has three different files. Um, the read, one file for the reads in each direction, and then a third file um, for the reads which didn't pass quality control, uh, contributing to there not being pairs. Um, so I'm gonna extract it, xf, I'll do zf so you can see it. I forgot that doesn't autocomplete. Oh, sorry, not Z. XVF, so we can see see the files that it's doing. So yeah, right now it's uh, doing the one direction. People tend to say forward, but it kind of depends on the sequencing technology that was used. Um, but just for ease of conversation, I'll say these are the forward reads. And it says these are trimmed. So again, the trimming process, normally the, the forward and reverse file always have exactly matched paired reads all the way down. Um, but since they were quality trimmed, if let's say one of the reads from the forward file was removed, but the other one in the reverse file was not, um, that actually, that read is taken out and put into the singletons file. So at the end, the forward and reverse fi files always have matching reads as you go down, which is required for almost all tools that read fast queue data. So here we have our files. I can do a tree here and see that we have our Docker file, a directory, and then the three sequence files. Of course, the tarball tar ball remains, it doesn't go away. Now, so we're ready, we have it extracted. Uh, we wanna create a Docker image. And really, so the process of this is, let's say you wanted to try this mega hit assembler, you had it on your machine, and you went through the steps of downloading it and compiling it or you know, extracting it, whatever that tool needs, and you dealt with any dependencies that it had, and you took good notes of that whole process. You can take those command line notes that you did and turn them into a Docker file definition. So here is what that looks like in this case. Is first, I use this from declaration, and I tell it which operating system I want to be represented within the Docker image. In this case, Ubuntu, and you can say which version. You can say, you know, colon current, which will get whatever the latest one is, um, or, uh, excuse me, latest, um, or it's much better practice to use a specific version. Uh, so that way you know that in this version, Bionic, which is 18.04 of Ubuntu, that these are the dependencies required. Um, it's always best to get as specific with versioning as you can, especially if you want to be able to reproduce this later, because what happens, for example, if you do latest here and you get into Ubuntu 22 and things like that, um, that you have issues with Python, which no longer have just a plain Python binary. They have Python 2 and Python 3. And this, this tool expects to be able to just call Python and assumes that resolves to Python 2. So just little dependencies like that. Um, so in this case, this tells me which operating system I want to be within the image. I give my information as the maintainer of this particular one, a description, version number, um, and then a series of run commands. And these can be, 
any of the steps you need to set up the environment within that image as you did on yours when you took notes. So the first thing I wanted to do in Ubuntu is do an update. So all the software versions were current. And then I wanted to install these things as dependencies. Next, it uses wget again to download from GitHub the tarball for the mega hit, the tool involved. I use the dash o command, so it gives it a shorter name. Um, so in this case, it would have called it just this mega hit, this very, very long name. I just call it mega hit.tar.gz. And then I extract that in the next line there. And then finally, this, this is a tool that doesn't need to be compiled or anything else. I, I downloaded a pre-compiled binary, uh, but I do need to move it in place. So that way in my path within the image, it can just find it if I type mega hit versus needing to type to the full path. So this last move command moves everything that starts with mega hit, all the binaries within that directory and moves them to user bin since I know that's, that's in my path. Now that we have that file, and again, I can link these all in the descriptions. Um, in this directory, it must be called Docker file, like very specifically like that. And then you can build it. <clears throat> you can tell Docker to build an image based on that by I'll say Docker build and give it a label, a title. I'll just call it mega hit. And then it wants to know what directory to find that. It's in the current directory. So I just put a dot to mean here and then run. It will download each of the layers. If you've already done something with Ubuntu Bionic, it will use that layer. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to download them again. And that will process sort of each line forward as you go from there. I just say this is a relatively, um, the desktop I'm on right here is a relatively uh, medium you know, desktop. It, I think it has four cores. Um, it's not a super beast or anything like that. Um, Mega hit runs pretty well on a, on on you know, medium read sets without needing like a larger cluster. Oh, and I'm slow package Python two. That's right. I think it's just called Python. So this is one of those iterative things. So you can uh, you can run it, see an error, correct that and then just build again. <clears throat> I try to do these videos live, like with a single pass through. So that way when issues do come up, as it would in the real world, if you were just working bioinformatics as your job, you sort of see the process of debugging them. Admittedly, if it happened too much, I'd make another video. But in this case, it, <laughs> it passed through um, and it's doing the update now. Okay, now that it's finished, it says successfully tagged mega hit latest and successfully built. Also, if you look at Docker images, um, you can see those that's now present in my list, mega hit latest. So we're now ready to use it. Um, you can pass when you do Docker, the Docker run command, um, you can pass any uh, commands to it and it will go into that uh, that tool and run the commands but it comes a little bit more complicated if you want to pass data inside so that it can read it and it doesn't actually transfer anything it simply does a little file system mount so it can see them so the paths are visible um, but I like to especially if you're doing this for the first time be able to just go into that docker image interactively so that you can do commands as you want and that helps sometimes make it a bit more clear so I'm gonna say docker run and then the dash V command is sort of the magic thing that lets us take files that are on the outside um, and make them visible within the Docker image. So if I list right here, I see I have this directory, this SRS directory. So I want to docker run and do the full path to that SRS directory. So the syntax is before the colon, I'll do my local path. And then after the colon, I want to say where within the image I want that data to be visible. So this folder on my file system is going to be visible within the image at slash data. And then I'm going to say that I want it to be interactive. The, the, the image I want to be run is mega hit. And the command I want to run within that image is just bin bash. So that will give me an interactive shell so I can run things. 
So there you see the terminal change and I can list the data directory. There's the read files that I extracted. Let's go ahead and cd into that directory. And here are the files. Now we are ready to just run mega hit. So I can type mega hit. The syntax is yeah, pass the forward reads first, whatever file that is. I use dash two to pass the reverse file. And if I have this singleton's file after trimming, it's optional, but it's with dash R like that. And then finally, I want to pass dash O and a directory name where the results will be written. So I'll say mega hit out and then I'll run this. Um, okay. So this machine has eight threads um, and it by default uses all of them. Um, <clears throat> it's going to run and give uh, some useful output as it goes so you can see that it's working. It talks about the different k-mers that it's assembling. But the idea here is it's taking all these very short reads and stitching them together into larger genomic context. This process on this machine should just take two to three minutes. Um, so I'm going to pause while it does that and be right back when it's done. Okay, it is now finished. Um, I said two to three minutes, it was just under three. Uh, so it finished 176 seconds, which is pretty decent for the number of reads that went in. If I list the current directory, I see that it's slash data and it did create this mega hit out directory, which is what I wanted. I can list that and I see some logs and things like that, but the important file is this one. This final contigs is the fast A file of the assembly. Um, so the process is done. Um, all I want to do is exit out Notice because that, that was that directory was mounted while I was inside the image, it still is mounted. It's it's the, anything created during that is also still there whenever I exit. So while this was the mega hit out directory, <clears throat> in the same place as the reads and slash data, if I list here, I had mounted that SRS directory. And if I look there, there's the mega hit out directory. So it persisted even though um, I, I left the image. So now I have the reads and the output directory for mega hit. So I can, sorry, left hand, I'm not doing great. Um, I can see the into the mega hit out directory. Look at all of them. <clears throat> I can see, count how many contigs are in that fast A file. So just under 10,000 and the assembly was done. Yeah, so that's an example of the process um, and the utility of this instead of just doing it on my local machine, is now I've created a Docker image. Um, I know that I could do all sorts of things to this computer over the next years that I own it. I could upgrade the operating system, um, upgrade all the software definitions, things like that. But everything within this image will stay frozen in time. It will still be the version of Bionic Ubuntu. It'll still have all these dependencies. This tool will still be there. Um, and I know that I could rerun it with <clears throat> all of the settings and configuration options being the same. You know, clearly important in reproducible science. I could also take this image and upload it to things like Docker Hub, uh, where it undoubtedly probably exists already. Um, but it's one of those things where if you create tools or you wrap tools yourself that are not there already, you can contribute them to the community for also running. So thanks for following along. I hope this was helpful. Later. <laughs>